All right, gonna go through and show you some really good dispensational proof texts. Some quick dispensational proof texts that you can use against the uh, non-dispensational heretics. And yes, I do say heretics because it is non-dispensationalism is a very satanic heresy. Non-dispensationalism is a doctrine of devils. Um, so I'm gonna show you some of the really quick little good, uh, really good quick proof texts for dispensationalism. I mean, the a really in-depth study on dispensationalism would. Um, really not be my type. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like a teacher. I'm not a preacher. I just make short videos. Um, so, uh, I really, if I was to ever do a really in-depth study, which I wouldn't do because I'm not a teacher, uh, but if I was a teacher and I was doing a really in-depth study, I would, uh, probably take me about an hour. But again, I'm not a teacher. I'm not a preacher, uh, nor do I claim to be. So I'm just going to show you some quick proof texts. So the first one is John chapter one, verse number 17 says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. What do you have there? A dispensational change. The law come in by Moses, but then Jesus Christ fulfilled the law. Yeah, you can see Luke chapter 24, verses 44 to 47 on that. And then grace came by Jesus Christ. You have a dispensational change there. That's the thing about dispensationalism. Things change. Okay, God deals differently with different people. He dispenses his grace in different ways. So that's your first text, proof text right there. So the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. That's a really good, makes a problem for the whole non-dispensational heretics who want to just deny that God dispenses uh, things differently. Next really good one is um, Romans chapter 16, verses 25 to 26. Now to him that is of power establish you, stab, to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Okay, what do you have there? You have a mystery that was hidden over time. What is that mystery? The gospel. You see, the gospel was not fully revealed until the Apostle Paul. It was a mystery. Now, they'll say, well, then how are people getting saved before that? People were getting saved before that. You see, in Acts chapter 5, because I want to kick this whole hyper-dispensationalism thing, too. Hyper-dispensationalism, what they teach, is that there's basically two different bodies of Christ, and that, you know, they got saved differently before Paul, or that kind of stuff. And No, the the uh, age of grace, the church age, came in after the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A hyper-dispensationalist says that it came in when Paul became an apostle, in Acts chapter 9. That's not true, okay? There were people getting saved before the the apostle Paul after the death of Jesus Christ. However, uh, because I've heard, you know, it's a good saying that a mystery can be in effect without being fully revealed, okay? And you see in Acts chapter 5, verse number 14, there are people being added unto the Lord. So, uh, there is, I uh, want to kick that whole hyper-dispensational thing that there that there is nobody in Christ before the Apostle Paul. Plus Romans uh, 16, 7, uh, Paul says, you know, people were in, Paul lists a bunch of people who were, quote, in Christ before him. So, yeah, I want to kick that whole hyper-dispensational thing, but the gospel was a mystery that was not fully revealed until Paul. That's dispensationalism. God reveals things over time. Another really good proof text is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 7 to 10, in keeping with the theme of a mystery being revealed over time. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 to 10, uh, ch starting at verse 7 down to verse number 10. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So it was not revealed till later on. Which, quote, look at this, which, verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for they, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord's glory. This is a really good proof text to use against those who say that, oh, they were they were saved by looking forward to the cross. Um, if so, then why did they crucify Jesus Christ? Because if they had known, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 2, 8. So, no, they were not saved by looking forward to the cross. Look at verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Look at verse 10. God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So you see, in keeping with the theme of there's a mystery that's being revealed over time. Again, John 1, 17. The law came by Moses, but, the, but grace came by Jesus Christ. Very simple thing, dispensationalism. Another good proof text is Ephesians. This is a really good one, actually. 
Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, you can see Romans 11, 13 and Romans 15, 16 on that. Uh, Paul is our apostle if you're a Gentile Christian. Look at verse 2. If you have heard of the dispensation, it is a biblical word, dispensation appears four times in the Bible. Uh, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 1, 10, I think it is. Uh, Colossians 1, 25. And uh, Ephesians 3, 2. And, oh, sorry. My alarm's going off. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, Ephesians 1, 10. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 17, Ephesians 3, 2, and uh, Colossians 1, 25. Those are the four times where dis the word dispensation appears in the Bible. But look at this. If you've heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you word, how that by, look at verse 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, where if ye have heard, ye may understand my knowledge of the mystery of Christ which, verse 5, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is revealed unto his holy apostles, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And what is that mystery? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. You can see Romans chapter, a good verse, actually I'll finish on in verse 7, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, even unto me by the effectual working of his power. Okay, the mystery is that the Gentiles could be grafted in. Okay, let me show you a scripture on that. Romans chapter 11. I think it's, uh, I'm trying to remember the exact verse. Uh, where is it, where is it? Yeah, here it is. Romans 11, verse 11. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall, God forbid, but rather through their fall... Salvation is coming to the Gentiles, for they provoke them to jealousy. Now, if the fall of them be the riches, be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of the riches of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Okay. Quick little side note: go kick, go kick at the replacement of theology heretics. There is a plan for the Jews in the future. Once the fullness of the Gentiles comes in at the rapture, the, the catching away. God is back to dealing with the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. God's not done with the nation of Israel. Right now. The Jews are very wicked. And you see, again, dispensationalism and, you know, Bible prophecy goes hand in hand. You see, if you're a replacement theology, if you're non-dispensational, you have to also become a replacement theology because you have to say, well, God, you know, it's just God's done with the Jews. You see, post-trip rapturism, another satanic heresy, replacement theology and non-dispensationalism all go hand in hand. Uh, then you got verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles as, as in, in as so much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Look at verse 14. If I, by any means I may provoke to the emulation them which are my flesh, physical Jews, physical Israelites, of the, we could say racial Jews, you put it that way, that I may that I may save some of them. Okay? You can also go down to uh, verse 24. Um, For if thou were cut off of the uh, wild olive tree, which is wild by nature, were it great and were grafted in contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be natural branches, be grafted graft into their own olive tree? You see, if you're a Gentile Christian, you're grafted in, okay? You're a wild olive tree. You're basically, um, a, you're, not, you're not a physical descendant of Abraham. You're only, you're only um, you can only partake in the, the promises given to Abraham of salvation, basically, um, which, you know, Again, dispensational thing. Uh, I guess Abraham was not trusting in Jesus Christ for salvation, but God says in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, in thee shall all nations be blessed. You know, you see, also see Galatians 3 8 on that. But you see, if you're a Gentile Christian, you're grafted in, you're a wild olive tree. So you ought not to be boasting against the branches, the, the tree which is Israel, because you're, you're simply, it's like you could put it, you're a guest in somebody's house. You're a guest. You know, you're, you're not, you're not a, uh, you're, you could say you're a spiritual son of God. You put it that way. Okay, you're not, uh, a ch you're not, okay, how do I word it properly? I'll just put it this way, okay? You're a spiritual, uh, you're a spiritual descendant of Abraham, okay? I'll put it that way, okay? You you have not replaced the Jews, you're just simply grafting as a wild olive branch, okay? That's something that replacement theology heretics don't understand. So I'm trying to figure out a way to word it properly, because um, this is a very, very deep doctrine. But then look at verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery... Again, the mystery. Uh, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part, 
okay, not all the Jews are blind, is happening to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in, okay? There's a plan for them in the future. Once our fullness, I, see, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Gentile. You see, I have, I'm Slavic, okay? Slavic are like, you know, Eastern European. Okay, I'm a, my ancestors were pagans. My ancestors were Slavic pagans, okay? They were not um, looking for a Jewish Messiah, okay? As a Gentile, once my fullness comes in, uh, then God God is back dealing with the nation of Israel, basically. And and that happens in the time of Jacob's trouble. But I want to show you guys that, how the mystery that was revealed to Paul was that the Gentiles should be partakers and fellow heirs of the uh, riches of Christ. Because again, Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. And you see in the book of Acts, is a transitional book. You see they're transitioning from the gospel being presented to the Jews, like in Acts chapter 2, to now be... So now the Jews rejected, and now they're going to the Gentiles. And there are still Jews getting saved, though. But our next, our next really good dispensational proof text is 1 Corinthians 9, 17. I mentioned this one earlier. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Okay? The gospel was committed to Paul. That's not a good dispensational proof text. The gospel was committed to Paul. Okay? The gospel was not fully revealed to Paul. Some more scripture on that. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which is committed to my trust. So you want, another, you want two other good dispensational proof texts, 1 Corinthians 9, 17 and 1 Timothy 1, 11. The gospel was committed to Paul. So there is another good dispensational proof text. Now, the final one I'm going to go through. Actually, I forgot this one right here. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Of course, a very well-known one. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that, sorry, <coughs> allergies. It's uh, allergy season for me, do apologize. Uh, I'll start again. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Okay, that's true. However, you got to be careful to rightly divide it. you got to be careful to realize, okay, what is, what, what can be applied to a Christian today, for example, I'd like to say this, you know, the book of Proverbs, for example, the book of Proverbs, a lot of it has a lot of good application for a Christian today, okay? However, uh, there are parts of the Old Testament, like Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 20, Ezekiel 14, 14, Ezekiel 18, verses uh, 24 and 27, which are not, you know, good for Christians today because they're talking about salvation that works in the Old Testament. So you got to be careful to rightly divide it. But the last scripture I'm going to go through is uh, Colossians chapter 1, verses 20, I'll start at verse 24, actually. Colossians 1, 24 to 27. Now, who now rejoice in my sufferings and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. The church is the body of Christ, not some pagan cult over in Rome. I just want to throw that out there. The Roman Catholic Church, basically. It's a pagan cult. That's what it is. The church is not a pagan cult that is Roman Catholicism, the church is the body of Christ, saved believers. Okay? Had to kick that that false cult that is Roman Catholicism. Uh, look at verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me, uh, given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Look at this again, keeping with the whole mystery thing. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. And again, what is that what is that uh, mystery? Verse 27, to whom God would, would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So again, the mystery is the gospel is done that the Gentiles can be grafted in, the gospel, basically. So I wanted to show you guys that. Those are some really strong dispensational proof texts, and there's many more too, by the way. This is just a basic, I mean, again, I'm not a teacher, I'm not a preacher. Uh, if I was a preacher and I was going to do, do a sermon on dispensationalism, it would take me probably about a good hour at least to, to cover every single scripture that can be used for uh, dispensational truth from the Bible. So anyway, don't be deceived by the non-dispensational heretics and just keep these scriptures in mind. Really good, uh, quick little proof text to use to prove that dispensationalism is a biblical concept. It is a scriptural doctrine. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.